Hi, Steve here at blessedhopeforever.com. We are well into September. If I remember correctly, this is uh, the year 2024. I have a little trouble remembering things these days because it seems like I have so much on my mind. I've talked to you before about timelines, rapture timelines. I suppose uh, the last thing that this world needs probably, or YouTube needs, is one more rapture timeline, but I'm going to give you one. To some degree, I've given you this same timeline, except I've sort of polished this puppy. And I'm seeing some things that I find really interesting that I wanted to point out to you and just let you decide, you folks decide whether or not you think this is worth thinking about. I don't really know what to call this except uh, maybe the church, the temple, the rapture, Antiochus, the fourth, Antichrist, Tribulation Period, Maccabees, Temple, Rededication, King Herod, Hanukkah, Millennial Kingdom, Rosh Chodesh, Thanksgiving, Partition of Palestine, Abnomaly. That's kind of too long of a title for a YouTube video, so I'm just going to call it something shorter and uh, try to present this in the, in the simplest way that I know how. I would like for you to imagine, if you would, I'm going to put some graphics up here on the screen for you to look at. A Hanukkah 2024 rapture of the temple, the church, to the kingdom, which uh, in, in which the dates along this timeline are most interesting, uh, where you have the tribulation period in between the rapture and the kingdom, uh, with an antichrist in the picture there which is the antitype of Antiochus IV, Antiochus IV being a type of the Antichrist. Most scholars would agree whose demise, you might say, led to the first Hanukkah in 164 B.C. God uses Antiochus IV to prefigure the person in the reign of the Antichrist. Antiochus IV, uh, Epiphanes, uh, illustrious one is what the word means, was a Greek Hellenistic king who ruled the uh, Seleucid Empire from 175 B.C. until his death in 164 BC. So he comes on the picture, he comes into the scene before the Messiah is born. After the death of, of Alexander the Great in 323 BC, a 22 year struggle took place. And when after the dust settled, Alexander's kingdom had been divided four ways, as Daniel had foretold two centuries earlier. Uh, we read about that in Daniel chapter 7 and 8. The division north of Syria, or the division north of Israel, primarily Syria, was ruled by a general named Antiochus IV, the eighth king in the Seleucid line, who ruled from 175 B.C. to 164 B.C. 
Now this guy was a cruel, dangerous monarch who eventually unleashed his hatred toward his subjects who lived to the south, the people of Israel. He took the title Epiphanes, meaning illustrious one. He's known for his methodical destruction of the Hebrew Scriptures, the outlawing of circumcision, Sabbath keeping, and the observance of Jewish feasts, the slaughter of thousands of Jewish women and children, and as a deliberate insult, the building of an altar to a Greek god in the temple in Jerusalem where he sacrificed swine on the altar. There's a further parallel that exists between Antiochus and the Antichrist. As cruel and powerful as Antiochus was, God in His kind providence raised up a family, the Hasmoneans, Maccabees, who led a revolt that brought the cruel reign of Antiochus IV to an end. That's Daniel chapter 8. The rededication of the temple then would have been on the creation calendar Kislev, in the month of Kislev, 25, 25th day of Kislev, 164 B.C. Thus, Hanukkah was born. No Hanukkah before that. Kislev 25 will be November the 27th this year, 2024. November 27, 2024. The first day of Hanukkah. And I want to put a big if out here. If we're raptured then, well, the following day is November 28th, Thanksgiving. The day after that is November 29. November 29. That may ring a bell with some of you. November 29, 1947, the UN adopted Resolution 181, also known as the Partition Resolution, that would divide Great Britain's former Palestinian mandate into Jewish and Arab states in May of 1948 when the British mandate was scheduled to end. And 1947 to 2024 is 77 years. 77. If we go forward from that date, 26, 25 days, which is the full number of days along any timeline, it takes us to January the 13th, 2032, when the kingdom begins on the anniversary of, well, I don't know if that's the right way to say it. It commemorates the day on the, on the creation calendar. You'll see it mentioned there, the death of Herod, the death of King Herod. Uh, now, keep in mind that Jesus will return to establish His earthly throne. So uh, we're looking at 80 months from the rapture, November 27, 2024, to the kingdom, January 13, 2032. Now I want you to remember that, that Herod clearly feared that this newborn king would someday take his throne. Okay? He was disturbed when the Magi came to Jerusalem looking for the one who had been born king. Uh, Herod had planned to uh, make the Magi tell him of the whereabouts of the Christ child. And when he heard of the Magi's change in course, he grew angry. He tried to kill the infant Messiah by killing all the young children in the area. Two years old, male, male children two years uh, and younger in an event known as the Massacre of the Innocents. Ma Massacre of the Innocents. What does the Antichrist do during the tribulation period? Well, he massacres the innocents. Now, as stunning and, and fearful as the Antichrist reign will be, God will send Christ to destroy him and his armies. Jesus returns to rescue Israel and destroy his enemies. That's Revelation 19. 
So several patterns or connections emerge here from these historical facts. The church, which is the temple in Hanukkah, Antiochus IV and the Antichrist, King Herod's death in the kingdom, and Rosh Chodesh, the first uh, crescent moon. The month of November is traditionally a time in which uh, some Christians remember those who have died. It is related to the fact that the end of November is the end of the liturgical year with the new year starting the first Sunday of uh, Advent. Uh, November derives from the Latin root uh, novem, meaning nine, because in the Roman calendar there were only ten months in the year, and, and November was indeed the ninth month. How many kings tried to kill the king of kings? How many? Actually, specifically tried to kill him. I'm going to suggest at least King Herod did. And so I, I believe he factors into this. I also want you to take note of the fact, and I'll point this out at the end of the video, there are temples seen all across this timeline. From beginning to end, there's nothing but temples. I want to, make a, I want to say something about that. We don't typically, Christians today don't typically think of the church as being the temple. You are a member, if you are a Christian, you're a member of the body of Christ, the one temple. You're not a temple and I'm a temple and we're all just a bunch of temples running around. We are members of the one temple, the body of Christ on earth. It's the only temple on earth. How does that make you feel? that you are a member of the one temple, the only temple that is presently that it presently exists on earth. Okay? And that temple is what is raptured. I, I'm tempted to jump ahead here, but I really don't want to do that. What I would like for you to do is look at this timeline. Okay? Uh, this timeline is going to include Antiochus IV, Herod, and Christ. As I pointed out, November 27, 2024, first day of Hanukkah on the creation calendar, if, and that's a big if, if the rapture should occur on that date, I want to show you what happens or where that takes us. First day of Hanukkah, November 27, this year. First day of Hanukkah. Not the second, not the third, first day. Now, when we think of this, of Hanukkah, we have to, to talk about Antiochus IV in 164 BC. We have to do that because this is how Hanukkah began was when the Maccabees cleansed and rededicated the temple in 164 B.C. We are raptured, the temple, and we are presented to God, holy, unblameable, unreprovable in His sight. So the timeline begins with the temple, but actually the idea of the temple precedes the timeline because we've got the first temple, the second temple, and then at the midpoint, there's going to be a third temple. Now, at that midpoint, because we go forward 1,290 days, it lands on June 8, 2028, which if just uh, simply, simply put, 1948 to 2028 is 80 years, so we're looking at the midpoint. On this timeline, the midpoint would mark 80 years for Israel. Okay? 80 years. 80 years doesn't end at the rapture. doesn't end at the second coming. It ends at the midpoint on this timeline. 
Now, if we go another 13, 35 days from the midpoint to the kingdom, to the beginning of the kingdom, inside that 13, 35 days, we've got 12, 60 days in which the Antichrist himself rules and reigns. Keep in mind, Antiochus IV okay, was a type of the Antichrist. That makes the Antichrist an, an anti-type of Antiochus IV. And when the Lord re returns to establish His kingdom, the day that the kingdom would begin, that 1335th day, would be January the 14th, 2032. That's when the king would return to establish his kingdom, the king of kings. And on the creation calendar, that date, January 14, 2032, is marked, they have it marked as the death of Herod. Death of Herod who was a king, okay, who died around 4 B.C., about the time that Jesus was born. Uh, I believe 3 or 4 B.C. is the date of Jesus' birth. There's a lot of evidence that points to that. I've, I've talked about that in the past. So, November 29, 1947, we have the partition of Palestine. Herod, he perceives Messiah to be a threat. We have Antiochus IV who defiled the temple. Uh, leading up to, resulting in, really the first Hanukkah. So we have November 27, 2024 Hanukkah, temple rapture, to the kingdom, the death of Herod, 2032, with the tribulation in between, the Antichrist, the, the antitype of Antiochus IV, whose defeat led to the first Hanukkah in 164 B.C., Jesus' birth being within the reign of Herod who died in 4 B.C., 4 B.C. to 2024 A.D., 2027 20, years. So 2027 or 2028 20, AD would then mark the midpoint uh, when the Antichrist defiles the temple, marking 80 years for Israel. This is a close up of the timeline. It's, it's pretty simplified. November 27, 2024, first day of Hanukkah. If we're raptured to the midpoint, where Israel becomes eight, turn is is then eighty years old. This, the kingdom then beginning, January 14, 2032, were that it's marked on the creation calendar, calendar the death of Herod. Keep in mind the death of Herod. Herod, what did Herod? Herod felt threatened by the birth of the Messiah. His rule, his throne was threatened. So you have the king of kings returning to establish his kingdom <coughs> on the day in which the Hebrew calendar marks or to remember the death of Herod. Rapture to kingdom, 26, 25 days. Now, if that sounds all confusing, let's look at this other chart. I, I tried to, to pictorialize this for you. November 27, 2024, first day of Hanukkah, in which we can't talk about the first day of Hanukkah without talking about Antiochus IV. King Herod then is, is born around, or dies around the same time that the Messiah is born, 4 B.C. He belongs on the timeline because he's going to come into it at the end of the timeline, the death of Herod. The, the midpoint being marking 80 years for Israel were that 
Antiochus IV, who was a type of the Antichrist. So you, you, we see Antiochus IV at the beginning, at, on the rapture. We see Antiochus IV in the middle, the midpoint, as a type of the Antichrist. And just as we see King Herod in 4 B.C., dying in 4 B.C., around the time of the birth of the Messiah, we see the kingdom date, the king of kings returning January 13, 2032, where the, the death of Herod is marked on that calendar. Here's what I'm seeing, folks, that kind of sort of gets me a little excited. I see temples running all across the timeline. I'll throw this up here for you to look at. Think about this, okay? 164 BC, the temple is defiled by Antiochus IV. Well, he defiled it before then, but it's 164 in which the Maccabees cleansed and rededicated the temple. Now we come to 3 or 4 B.C., take your pick. We're, we're looking at the birth of the Messiah. You could say the birth of the temple. Okay? Because He is, Christ is, the temple. His body, the body of Christ on earth today, the church, is the only temple that exists presently. And so now we're looking at the church, His body, the temple, Okay? Being raptured. What is raptured? The temple. This, this is what's interesting to me. We go, actually, the church began, I'm jumping ahead, the church began in Pentecost, at Pentecost, in Acts at Pentecost, and so his body, the temple, you know, just several decades after the Messiah's birth, now we have the body of Christ beginning. That's the temple. In 70 A.D., move forward to 70 A.D. now, and we have the destruction of the temple. Again, it's, the temple is destroyed. We come to the present time, our generation here, which, in which I believe the rapture will occur. Now we're looking at the rapture. That's the rescue of the temple. The rapture of the temple, what happens after we're gone? Well, there's a third temple. The sacrificial temple. But it doesn't stop there. You go to the midpoint, now you have a defiled temple. The Antichrist defiles the temple. Sets himself up as God. Claims to be God. It doesn't end there. We go on over to the second coming, what, what happens at the second coming? What, what could you, you have every right to say that at the second coming, it's the temple that returns. And then the kingdom in which the sacrificial system will be reinstituted, reinstated, sacrifices will be re, reinstated, reinstituted during that, that thousand year reign of Christ. So, and we're looking at the king and a kingdom, and so we're certainly looking at a temple. From beginning to end, on, along this timeline, which begins in, at, I've marked 164 B.C. as when the Maccabees cleansed and rededicated the temple to God. You've got to keep in mind, before that, there, were, there, there was... You know, we, we're looking at a, a temple destruction. It's, I don't know if I'm making my point very clear here. What I'm suggesting, folks, is, is that not only in the Word of God, but in our lives, it appears that, the, that just that word temple is a dominant theme that runs like a just a thread that, that's woven throughout the entire 
Word of God. The temple. We don't talk, we don't talk much about the temple. We don't, we don't think in those terms of, you know, temple. We certainly don't see ourselves, if you've made the mistake of seeing yourself as a temple, well, that's a grave error. You're not a temple. You are a member of his one of the one body, the church, which is the temple. Christ is the temple. So you've got temple all through this timeline. And it's in, that word temple is inseparably connected to Christ. So temples run all across the timeline. I've never seen that before. Primarily because it's never begin, began with that, except when I suggest that the rapture may occur on Hanukkah. First day of Hanukkah. It may catch us by surprise. It may catch many... The rapture may catch many Christians by surprise because I doubt that they're looking for the rapture to occur on a Hanukkah. You know, it's always Feast of Trumpets or Pentecost or, or the Day of Atonement or, or Tabernacles or, you know, the eighth day of Solemn, Asse Solemn Assembly. Uh, it's always something besides Hanukkah or Christmas or, you know, I'm fascinated by this. For some reason, this captured my attention. And I, want, I just wanted to show this to you. November 27. November 27. If that's the rapture date, then the following day, the 28th, is Thanksgiving. And November 29 marks the partition of Palestine in 1947. What's really interesting about this timeline is that the midpoint is 2028, which marks 80 years for Israel. So that's it. I will be posting these uh, screenshots to Facebook and uploading them to our website, uh, posting them to Facebook. You can uh, pause the screen, take screenshots. Uh, will the rapture occur on November 27, 2024? Well, it doesn't matter what date you suggest. There's part of us, you know, as, as human beings, there's, there's, there seems to be a, a reluctance to actually believe that any, any date that we propose is, is the actual date. Folks, we might be surprised. You might be surprised. Look, I love you all. I truly do. I hope that I've made some sense out of this. Study the charts. It, that, that helps to do that. Uh, take a screenshot. Study the charts. And just take a look at how simple that this really is. How that the, the math seems to... Everything, all the, all the arithmetic seems to be in order how that the dates seem to be uh, in order. It is a good timeline. Now, whether the Lord chooses to use it or not, is, that's the question. It seems like every year we can always come up with some kind of fairly decent timeline. And there's been a lot of timelines proposed and, and, and uploaded and published to Facebook and YouTube. But I've never seen anything quite like this one. And, and I think it's because of the connections between the Antichrist and Antiochus IV, which led to the first Hanukkah, that being the suggestion that we're raptured on Hanukkah. 
as well as the death of Herod. The death of Herod. Wouldn't it be something? Can you can you just try to can you imagine that the Lord would imagine here? Here's here's our Lord Jesus Christ. He re, he returns and he establishes his kingdom. The first day of that blessed day, that blessed day in which the the kingdom actually begins, would begin on the creation calendar in which. It's mentioned, let's not forget King Herod, the death of King Herod, the death of King Herod on the day that the kingdom would begin. The death of King Herod. Well, why is that important? Why, does that, why, why should we find that interesting? Well, simply because Herod considered the Messiah a threat to his throne. Now you know you, when you when you create a timeline like this, you can't pick that those dates and those events and those times that associate with that. You can't you can't you can't create that on your own. It's just it's just how it comes out. There are 26, 25 days along any timeline. If the rapture occurs November twenty seventh. It'll be on the first day of Hanukkah. In which case, that the kingdom then would begin 26, 25 days later on the anniversary or the, the date in which the creation calendar marks as something to remember the death of King Herod. Join us on Sunday as we're studying through the Galatians, verse by verse. We're in the fourth chapter. Uh, I want to say that in closing that I appreciate every one of you. I, I, I love you all. I truly do. Uh, rest in Him. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.